Creating Geographies for Capital Accumulation and the Reproduction of Crisis Switching capital into built environment is the most accomplished special manifestation of capital, and actually architecture and urbanism are among significant agents actively involved in the process of fixing capital in the built environment. Since this process of spatial fix is mainly directed by the interplay between logic of capital and political agencies, reproduction of crises such as special inequalities, urban poverty, injustice, exploitation of nature, and so on could be inevitable. To overcome the current planetary crisis and to construct an alternative urbanization that can provide more humanized urban life experiences is to begin with considering the existing socio-spatial dialectic more and instead of mere abstractions in the education as well as practice of architecture and urbanism. The architectural education that can integrate concrete realities of the context into its pedagogy through providing critical perspective can be accomplished in producing real possible solutions to the present crisis. In this respect, the ongoing study aims to critically examine the role that architecture and urbanism play in sustaining urbanization which leads to reproduction of contemporary crises. Moreover, insights into the possibility of forming a more challenging framework for practicing architecture and urbanism will be provided. As Harvey says, special forms and social processes have interpenetrations so that special forms contain social processes and social processes are special. The broader viewpoint of the existing socio-spatial dialectic per se provides a critical approach toward the built environment and its crisis. The crisis of different sorts, from urban poverty, socio-spatial polarization, class-determined fragmentation, marginalization of the lower social strata, to the exploitation of nature, all can be taken into account as the products of the processes of urban space production. Hence, as Lefebvre puts it, the understanding of the processes and the means involved in the space production, along with the social relations processes, is of significant importance. It is not possible to expect a more inclusionary, fair and free urban life experiences for all city dwellers, regardless of their social class, unless by moving beyond the visible current planetary crisis as the outcomes to the processes produce them. Contemporary process of urbanization, in fact, is wedded to what Merrifield best called it as the general law of capitalist accumulation. The production of space under capitalism produces different experience of urbanism for different social classes through constructing structures of advantages and exploitation that benefit the dominant class together with structures of disadvantages and deprivations that alienate the rest of the society. Within this system, urban space and quality of urban experiences both become like a commodity for those who could pay for it. Capital is in a perpetual movement and major parts of this movement occur at the special level. Since capital mobility pattern is extensively rested upon exploitation, environmental problems across the urban space, where capital is in its most mobile form, can be witnessed. So, in the absence of any intervening action, space production under hegemonic command of capital and the state will be solidified and will reproduce crisis that leaves its profound impacts on the most vulnerable and poorest of the poor strata. As a part of planning and intervention to change the predominant pattern of space production that brings about crisis, is to highlight the social responsibility that the architect has to take on toward the society. Of course, this could be accomplished unless by making some changes in the architectural education to have sociopolitically responsive architects as future graduates. 
To this end, the attempts should be directed toward integrating architectural education, in particular design studios with insights from sociopolitical mechanisms that are engaged in production, reproduction, and manipulation of urban space. The design project indeed should be regarded as a research project that requires a critical examination of the present socio-special dialectic. Then, building on the obtained critical examination, design projects should be programmed concerning existing concrete problems of the society. The architectural practices could be liberating if embracing sociopolitical engagement, moving from the final outcome to the space production process, and addressing the collective social well-being. Concluding thoughts. As long as the mode of space production is driven by the hegemonic command of capital and the state, monopolizing urban space for a small portion of society, wealthy elite, and their needs, while marginalizing the poor, can be a prevailing practice. The production of socialist space necessitates the move from the urban space as an exchange value to the urban space as a use value. This is what Merrifield says. So, not the logic of capital, but socially driven mode of production that gives priority to the social choices is the most needed for the contemporary world. Reminding the architect to be aware of his, her position and role not as a passive agent contributes to the current dominant mode of space production and subsequently the, the urban crisis come along with it, but as a sociopolitically conscious, responsive and active subject that engages in the very process can be the basis for inventing future in a different way. Thank you for listening.